What's going on everybody? Today we're bringing to you the buyer's guide for the Yamaha FZ6. This is all the things you need to look out for if you're looking at a used FZ6. You're thinking about picking up everything from brakes to funny noises and the history of check engine lights. I got you covered right here and you know what you gotta do. Hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps me out. But let's get into it. I hope you guys like this one. Check the front brake rotors for scoring and grooves. Basically, you should run your fingernail across the front rotor and you shouldn't feel any big hangups. If you feel a big groove in there, it's probably caught a rock into the pad or something. You don't want that. Other thing is check the front rotor for thickness. It has to be between 4.5 and 5 millimeters. You're best off to use a micrometer, something like this, to measure the thickness. Basically, get it on the rotor, measure in the middle point, not on the edge out here or on the inner edge, but right in the middle of where the pad makes contact. Take your measurement and take your measurement in a couple different places along the radius of the rotor. The reason we check rotors is because they're expensive. They can be about $300 to replace each side. So total about six or $700 depending on where you get your parts. You can get them used on eBay though for about 120 with a slight wear. Next, check your brake pad thickness. This is really hard to get a shot of, but the pad should be no thinner than 0.5 of a millimeter and no thicker than 4.5 millimeters. Just really, you can eyeball it from standing at the front of the bike and looking next to them. The pads have a groove in the middle running up the pad and you should be able to see a groove. If you can't see a groove, the pads are worn out. The rear disc rotor thickness should be between 4.5 and 5 millimeters and the rear pad thickness here should be one and six millimeters. Once again, check for scoring, check for grooves, and check for cracking around the drilled holes. Any signs of cracking or grooving is bad. Use the sight glass on the top of the master cylinder for the front brakes to check the quality of the brake fluid, like the color, and also make sure it has enough because uh, that's the last thing you wanna run out of. For a closer look at the brake fluid quality, you could take off the cap on the rear master cylinder reservoir. Be careful though, have a paper towel or a couple nearby because brake fluid is caustic, you don't wanna drip on the paint. But once you take this out, you can look directly into here and make sure the whole reservoir is clean, there's no sediment sitting in there. Of course, you wanna check the oil, let the bike get up to temp, turn it off, let it sit for a minute or two to let the oil drain, then unthread the oil dipstick. The bike should also be on a level surface on the center stand. Wipe it off. When it's clean like this, it has to be between the low mark and the high mark right here. You put it in until the threads make contact. You don't thread it in, you pull it out, check your mark. It can be a little bit hard to get a clean measurement because it might be oil sitting in the hole, but try a couple times. Mine's just a hair over full. Oops. Anyways, check your oil there. It should look clean. If the owner says they just did an oil change and it's black, they're lying to you, walk away from it. So the chain slack should be between 45 and 55 millimeters. If you don't want to bring a ruler, uh, here's your quick tip. Basically, right behind this plastic guard here, you should be able to push up on the chain and it shouldn't hit the plastic guard. If it hits the plastic guard, you've got too much slack. And well, if the chain feels tight moving up and down, obviously you've got too little slack. Spin the tire to a different spot, spin the chain to a different spot, push up again and check. If it hits the plastic, like I'm pushing up pretty good here, I can't, still can't touch the plastic. Spin it again, check. And basically you shouldn't have any tight spots. Nowhere along here should there be tight spots in the chain having less slack or more slack. To check the condition of the chain and sprocket, you can go to the rear sprocket and pull back on it. Basically you shouldn't be able to see across the sprocket when you pull back on the chain. Basically if you can see the bottom of the tooth on the sprocket when you pull the chain back, the chain and sprocket aren't seating together well and they have lots of wear. So make sure you can't see any light and make sure you can't see the bottom of the sprocket when you pull it back. We're gonna check the battery twice, once while it's sitting here not running and once when it is running. But first, when it's not running, it should have over 12.6 volts. 12.8 is great, 12.7 is awesome, and anything less than 12.6 is bad. You might think, oh, 12.5, but I'm serious. Anything less than 12.6 is not good. All right, now we're gonna check the infamous problem with the FZ6, which is its charging voltage. You have to check charging voltage running at 5,000 RPM, so it can be a bit of a trick you want to do by yourself. I'm gonna try and get it done for you guys, but you should see over 15 volts. Anything over 14 would be satisfactory. If you're seeing less than that at 5,000 RPM, you got an issue in your charging circuit, which uh, could be multiple things. If it's going way over 15 volts, like 17, 18, uh, that's also a problem. That means your regulator's shot and you're not getting it. Your rectifier is, re is producing more electricity than the regulator can handle and it's not being able to regulate it down to the 15, which is bad. You can overboil your battery. So here, I'll get this in here turned on. Be patient with me for a sec. So we got 12, 8. 
bike on. Next up, your clutch will have a little bit of rattle. I'm gonna show you what it sounds like when it rattles. This is normal. This is a normal sound, something you should expect to hear. Basically, when you're in neutral, clutched out, you hear the plates chatter against each other, and some people get confused and scared and worry about that being a problem, but it's not. I'm gonna try and get a sound clip for you here so you know what it sounds like when it's healthy. Check to make sure the throttle grip has three to five millimeters of play. A little bit of play like this is normal, but excessive or a tight grip is a problem. Maybe make a tape mark across, rip the tape, and then roll the grip back and forth and see how much play you have. Three to five millimeters is what you're aiming for. Next up, you wanna check your idle speed is about 1300 RPM, plus minus 50 RPM. Basically, it's hard to eye up, but it should be between this 1000 mark and that half mark that is 1500. Just air on the high side of the halfway between those two marks and you should be good. And that's at a warm idle. Bikes up to full operating temp, sitting there, no throttle, ready to go. Now I'll show you how to check for current and past check engine lights through the diagnostic mode. All right, to get into diagnostic mode, you have to have your switch set to run, your key in the off position, and when you turn on the key, we're gonna hold the reset and select button until the screen changes. So pressing down, turn the key on, you're gonna hear your pump turn on, we're gonna wait, it's gonna change in just a moment. There we go, D1 or Diag, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, next you press and hold, reset select for two seconds again to select diagnostic mode. Now that you're in, you turn your switch back to off uh, and now you can scroll through the settings. We're gonna scroll all the way to 62. 62 tells you the number of codes or malfunctions the bike has detected in its lifetime or at least since the battery's been disconnected and then 63 tells you how many codes are being stored right now like active in the bike so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to 62 we're going to flip the switch to on went back to zero go back to zero and we've erased the codes and that's it you can check over here there's still zero zero over there because there's no active and that's it pop out of diagnostic mode and when you want to start your bike back up again you don't have to worry about going back into diagnostic mode or anything just turn the key back on and it'll start like normal next check your plastics for even gapping you can see i have a finger's width here but as i go across it gets narrower and then if you go to the other side it's actually touching the tank lightly this is because this bike's been down i actually crashed this bike a long time ago and repaired it but i haven't gotten the front stay that holds the whole fairing together nice and straight i should replace it but i didn't but basically you should have about a finger's gap when properly assembled around the whole tank on both fairing pods over here. Like this, this is normal, but up here where it gets really close to the tank, that's not normal. You also wanna look for fitment of the plastics like this. This shouldn't be sticking out. It should push in all the way. Uh, and little things like the inner plastic up here not quite lining up, those are all signs that it was put together a little bit crooked, and I'm honest, that, that's what happened to me. So check that for yourself. Check over the body for any scratches or nicks or even cracks in the frame. If the bike's been down bad enough, that could be a possibility. If the engine has engine guards, check for any scratches, check to see if they've been repainted. Look for all those things to prevent yourself from buying a bike that's been down and is in bad shape. Another tip about the noise these bikes make, they're very ticky because it's a four cylinder, four valves per cylinder, all that stuff. It just makes for a lot of clatter, but too much clatter is bad. And people often have issues with their timing chain tensioner back here. So if you hear a distinct tick coming from this side of the motor right here, it tucks in just behind this uh, piece of the frame right here, that's a bad sign. But normal tick, like you can look up clips or listen to mine of the FZ6 idling, is normal. This thing is not like a quiet, lumpy machine. It makes a lot of little clattering noises that you should be accepting, accepting of. The last thing to think about when you're thinking about picking up a used FZ6 is when the valve lash was serviced. Basically this needs to be done every 40,000 kilometers or 24,000 miles. I've got a 15 minute video on it in my channel. Go check that out if you're concerned about an FZ6 that needs the job. You can tackle it, it just takes a while. 
It will cost you about eight, nine hundred dollars depending on the shop you go to, maybe less, maybe more, but that's my estimate. And it's pretty common now that these bikes need a valve lash service being, you know, 13 years old-ish. It's pretty common that they're past that 40,000 kilometer mark. Signs of a bike needing a valve lash job would be a lot of irregular valve train noise or louder than normal tick. And I know this can be really hard as a buyer to suss out whether it's a normal tick or it's an abnormal tick or it's too loud or, you know, because you don't know, you're not familiar with the bike but take your best intuition and it's always a good idea to take a bike to a shop to have them look over the bike and they always find something wrong with it. That's good and bad. It's good because it gives you some leverage to work it with the buyer to find a lower price because you can be like, hey, your brakes are worn out, you know, the plastics are misaligned, has this been dropped kind of thing. You can bring some arguments to the table to hopefully lower the price. Uh, it just costs money and often you have to like drive it there and who does that so it can be a bit of a hassle But it's certainly worth it in the long term to get a mechanic to check it out but If you don't want to do that follow the instructions I just gave you in this video here and you're less likely to get ripped off with a bike That's got a glaringly obvious problem spark plugs are basically a consumable on this bike and you can't really inspect them But you can ask basically when the service was done last they'll last in my experience around 15,000 kilometers people say they get 20 25 even 30,000 kilometers out of a set of spark plugs that's just not been my experience. So if the plugs were done 5,000 to go, you can expect to do them in 10 to 20, I'd say. It's not a big deal. It's a pretty easy job to do. I've got a video on it. But yeah, I think that just about covers the most of the major aspects of the things that can go wrong with the FZ6. If this video helped you out, please smash the like and subscribe button down below. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a good day.